the Hackintosh install with uh, Chris Jenkins. Chris is going to talk about the um, after install. What do you do? So, uh, Chris, take it away. Hey guys, how we doing today? Uh, I know you all recognize me from last week. I know we have, uh, you know, we had some fun last week doing the the installation of the Hackintosh. Uh, but what do you do after afterwards? Uh, I'm gonna be here to walk you through a few of the things that we can uh, kind of accomplish for that. Um, so as you can tell here, I'm at a nice nice PowerPoint again. Um, and unlike the last one, I do have links um, at the the end of this this uh, this slide here. These uh, these slides here entailing where to get these specific uh, programs at. Um, so uh, as you can tell, we are uh, Tech and Coffee, uh, uh, Google Plus Live Hangouts. You know, and uh, most of the time we're, we're not live. We're just you know, we're not live. So um, without any further ado, let's go ahead and uh, get right into it. What do you say, guys? Excellent. Let's excellent. do it. All right. So um, as you can tell. We're not in Windows anymore. We are not. Um, so going from Windows, you know, an everyday driver from Windows to uh, to Mac OS is a huge difference. You know, you used to see in along the bottom, you used to see in the start button. You know, all of your programs are now at the bottom. You know, that that's that's true to some degree, but there are some differences. You know, uh, Mac OS has the dock, whereas um, Windows 7 has the, the full toolbar at the bottom. Um, and if you do notice on Mac OS, there is a top menu as well, whereas um, the actual, you know, Windows 7 doesn't have that unless you put your taskbar from the bottom to the top. Um, so there's, there's some real definite differences there. Um, but we're not, you know, here for that today. We're just going to, you know, that's just some uh, general differences between those two. Um, today you're going to learn the various types of uh, post-install programs that we're going to be using um, for this this Hangouts. Um, there are a couple that uh, are the best to use, and I'll be here to show you, make sure that we can uh, guide you through, and make sure that we can get you uh, good to go. All right. All right. Without any further ado, um, I'm actually going to introduce the first program that we're going to be using here. This is something that's called MultiBeast. Right, MultiBeast is a all-in-one post-installation uh, installer. It's very easy to use, um, and again, the links to, to this will be at the end of the uh, the slides here. Um, I will be posting this to Google Plus, and I will be also be posting this to Facebook as well. Um, so we'll be you know good to go on that. So I'm just going to show you how to actually use this, and it's really really simple, except you know. You might not know what to click and what not to click, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you that right now. Let me give me just a second here while I uh, do some screen share. All right. So as you can see here, we have a multi beast, multi beast. I don't know what this is. Is that an apple or a tomato? I I don't know. Um, but like a cherry. Uh, what do you guys think? Apple tomato? I don't know. I'm gonna go with cherry. It looks like a cherry. cherry. Okay, unique. Very nice. I like it. All right. So. Um, it gives some, you know, details over here. Easy Beast, user DSTT. Those are just some things that are technical terms for things that we don't need to worry about. Um, so what we're looking for is the Windows 10.7 retail method, and uh, this is basically just telling you a quick and dirty, you know, rundown of what we did last time, pretty much. Um, and there's some things down here. Um, we got the Chameleon team, Netcus, uh, Project uh, OSX, LNX to, to Max, you know, all these people that have uh, kind of made this this possible, you know. And of course, Tony Mac x86, of course, can't forget to mention him. All right, so software license agreements. If you want to read that, you can. I'm not going to read it over the air because I'm pretty sure that'll be, you know, uh, not fun. And we're all about fun here, taking copy, right? Exactly. Yes. Uh, to continue installing the software, this is pretty basic on all uh, Mac OS X um, uh, software installs. Just press, just press agree. It's done. See? All right. Now we're to the parts where um, there are some different types of uh, things that we can get into, right? So uh, we're into the customizations now. We got some themes we can install. 
Um, but I would really stay away from those for right now because this next tool that I'm going to be introducing will be the best one that we can use for this, right? Um, so um, as of right now, the only thing that we're going to worry about, um, unless your um, form install says so, is we're just going to be worrying about the Easy Beast install, right? So Easy Beast install. Um, as you can tell down here, um, it's DSDT free, so there's no worries about any kind of kernel panics or anything going on with this. Um, because if you use this and you use the wrong DSDT, trust me, you will have kernel panics and you will probably cry, especially after all the work you put into your, your Hackintosh, trust me. I, I, I wanted to cry a couple times whenever I, I had some kernel panics happen to me. Um, but uh, as it says here, it does install Chimera, um, which, you know, you, you can do this and install Chimera, but you can also um, go back and install Chameleon later with the... Uh, the next tool I'm about to show you. Um, it installs the fake SMC, which is nice. It's, it's a little uh, kernel extension that will allow you to uh, kind of, you know, do everything that, that you need to do. Um, basically, it installs just all the, uh, all the kex that you need, pretty much. Um, eight times out of ten, you'll be good to uh, come down here and, and go to drivers and go to kex and enablers. And I know this for my system. I actually was able to use, um, which one was it? Uh, it was this one right here, actually. This is the one that I use right now, um, the audio driver that I use. However, there's nothing, in, there's nothing else in here that I could use. Um, also, I use that, and also I use the, this is the, the Ethernet driver that I use, the LNX to Max uh, Realtek RTL uh, 8100XX uh, driver. So that's good. Um, but, you know, I mean, uh, all of this stuff will be set up in your, uh, your computer's form if you need that. Um, and they'll tell you, you know, when you're installing multi -beast, this is what you want to do. Um, so that was a very quick overview of multi -beast. Uh Does anybody have any questions on that? You know, I... There's a question. Oh, sorry. There was a George, question. George. Was how about heirloom? Please? Something about heirloom? Heirloom. I'm sorry. I, I think there. I think that was about the heirloom tomato. Oh, okay. Oh, is that what it was? That's what you know. You're talking about the little logo. They were. I think that's what it is. I could be wrong. That was yeah. Oh, okay, sweet. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we, we definitely have a, a nice answer for that one for sure. Yeah. I was thinking tomato. Some people think cherry. I don't know. You know. I guess it's uh, up to the individual. You know. But uh, thank, thank you, Jeff, for that. Thank you for the uh, the heirloom tomato. Um, hey, that that came from the chat, by the way. Oh, it came from the chat. I got you. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so um, just to kind of, you know, give you a quick rundown, um, this, this uh, presentation is not going to be 50 minutes like it was last week um, because we're only covering just a couple, you know, things this time. Um, we're actually coming up on, on the last uh, piece of software that we need to uh, um, kind of install here. Um, this one is, is called ChampList. I know you remember last time um, I was mentioning uh, Chameleon Wizard. Chameleon Wizard is nice, but um, Champless is, is a lot better. Um, I, I have since recently, you know, tried to use this, and I have had great success with it, actually. Um, so Champless, uh, it does everything that Chameleon does, Chameleon Wizard does, but it does it better. Um, so I'll go ahead and bring up the interface here for you. Um, basically what ChampList is, um, and Chameleon Wizard are like, what they are, is a, a vital program that you need to uh, possibly get your, your iCloud, FaceTime, and, and uh, Mac App Store working because literally I just got mine working today, to be honest. Um, well, last night, rather. Um, I was downloading some apps last night, and I finally got my uh, Apple ID synced up with my, um, with my iCloud which is nice, so, uh, and that was, did it break? No? Okay, all right. So, um, yeah, it looks like we had a bit of a server error there, but we're good, and, uh, I missed it. Okay, yeah, yeah, so, um, so yeah, champ lists. Um, it's, it's, it's better than Chameleon Wizard. Chameleon Wizard's okay, um, but champ list is a lot better. It gives you a lot more options, a lot more themes, um, 
and it allows you to adjust your DSDT. Now you're thinking, wait a second, what is this DSDT he's talking about? Well, I'll tell you what it is, all right? So when you go up to uh, System Profiler and you look up your, uh, your computer type, of course it's not going to say Dell XPS 9000 or Dell, Dell XPS 435D, right? Because, you know, Mac's not supposed to be used on a PC. It's supposed to be used on a Mac, you know? Um, so basically what it is, basically, is it's, it's full details of your computer, um, i.e. model name, model number, um, serial number, those types of things. And Champlist will allow you to uh, kind of adjust those things so that way Mac OS will be able to uh, utilize the App Store and things of those sorts. So may I ask a question? Yes, please. So it's, cha so it's like it's basically spoofs it to believe that the, the Mac store believes it is a running on a true Apple Mac. Is that Correct. what you're saying? Okay, so it's a spoofing tool. Yes, yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's basically what it is. Um, but not only is it, is it a spoofing tool, but it's like a multi-use tool. It's kind of like a Swiss Army knife, kind of. Yeah. And um, let me see if I can f pull up my system profiler here, system information. Um, not much for there, but uh, basically... My uh, my DSDT was set up to be a 20-inch Mac, um, a Mac Pro, 3.1, that was made in 2000 or late 2010. So um, it's it doesn't say you know Dell XPS 9000. It says Mac Pro. Um, so uh, you know at this point you're like, wait a second, hold on, hold on. You just said iCloud doesn't work. You know App Store, FaceTime doesn't work. Yeah, I mean. Uh, you have to actually install your, your Ethernet driver first, which is something that uh, you, know, you need to do through the network setup. And uh, I can actually show you how to do that real quick. It's, it's pretty painless and easy. Um, let me go ahead and pull that up for you here. Do you mean to be sharing the screen right now, Chris? Yeah. Yes. You're not currently shared. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, I'm just... Uh, I had to pull this, this screen up here real quick, sorry. There we go. There we go. All right, so as you can tell, um, I am actually running a wireless um, uh, device, you know, wireless uh, dongle for my uh, Internet purposes. But as you can tell, um, for some reason, Mac OS thinks it's an uh, Ethernet cable, which is what we want, because for some reason, um, the App Store... Um, iCloud and all those types of uh, services that are built into Mac OS themselves will not work over a Wi-Fi uh, card or Wi-Fi uh, kernel extension, you know, through this. So we actually have to trick Mac OS into thinking that we're using an Ethernet uh, cord, which is what we did here. The best thing to do with that is to get, uh, come down here, delete everything down here, so minus this, minus everything that's in this column here, and basically just uh, add the Ethernet again. You know, just, just install the kernel extension for your Ethernet, and then add the Ethernet as the first one, and then add your Wi-Fi card as your second one. So that way you can take full utilization of your uh, uh, Mac OS software. All right, so uh, looks good there. So um, next thing we're going to get into, actually, is going to be the the last piece of software that we need, and that's going to be ChampList. Give me just a second while I screen share this over. Uh, wow, okay. I guess I can't screen share the specific numbers. So I guess I'm going to have to uh, screen share the, uh, the desktop, which is all right, I guess. All right, so um, first things first, we see Kibone here. The, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the bootloader we use, right? So uh, you can actually update uh, Chameleon through here, just like you could Chameleon uh, um, Wizard, right? So, uh, you know, not much here. Auto-update, turn that on every time you, you launch uh, Champ List. Um, check for it in the background whenever it first starts up. As you can tell, that little circle just came up here. It, it checked for the latest version, and I do indeed have the latest version. Um, so chameleon configurations. This is where it starts to get real nice because instead of uh, having to go through terminal and 
doing those specific uh, types of, of things through terminal, you know, those specific commands through terminal, you know, no one wants to uh, edit a text document through pseudo nano. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, I don't want to, you know, run terminal commands to edit a, a text document that I can edit through a, a GUI. Um, so, as you can tell here, these are all the things that are required of my uh, motherboard and set up to run. Um, and as you can see here, the restart fix was uh, 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 implemented here. And it was also implemented in MultiBeast as well. And it's just saying that it is in, in the, the, the startup. Um, so this is pretty general. I mean, these are things that uh, you use or you don't use. And these, these things you will find out through your, uh, your forum pretty much, right? And as I was mentioning earlier, um, this is the SM BIOS, and this is what basically an SD, uh, DSDT is. Um, it allows you to have the different types of uh, things that are, are assigned to your computer. So as you can see, Mac Pro. Uh, I got a Mac Pro 3.1 apparently. Um, and I have a, a Mac uh, motherboard too as well, you know. I don't know about that. But uh, wait a second, BIOS version, that doesn't look right. Uh, Multibeast.TonyMacX86.com. That's definitely not right. Um, we got a serial number which uh, was generated by uh, uh, Champlist itself. All you got to do is just serial generator and there it is. It's done. Um, this is one vital thing that you do have to do in order to get your um, Mac, or, sorry, your uh, Apple services running, right? So, and it's also kind of nice because it also has a Kex utility, which I mean, if, if any of you have ever tried to install a Kex, you know it's a nightmare to do it manually. So why not have the GUI do it for you? I mean, it's, it's easy, you know? Um, and in, in my opinion, um, there are some better uh, themes on this one. Let's see here. So is, is Champlist part of Chameleon Bootloader? It is not. It's actually a separate piece of software. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let's see here. Let's refresh these themes here. And we got a bunch of themes here, you know. It looks like we have a lot more than we did over on Chameleon uh, Wizard for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, with this uh, Champlist, I, I did include the, uh, the link in, in the ends of the... Uh, of the PowerPoint there, and you know, again, it has the keynotes, and uh, I'll go ahead and upload that as a PDF, so that way we can be good to go with that. Um, so, without further ado, does anybody have any comments or questions about any of these these uh, these applications? You know, these 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 apps or anything? Well, for those who just joined, uh, how about you explain exactly what all this is? Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. So um, this is the uh, post installation um, for the Hackintosh software. Um, I'll go ahead and pull that graphic up again. It's pretty cute. It's pretty cute graphic, in my opinion. Um, it's a post installation for for the Hackintosh. Uh, the best post install programs to use once your Hackintosh is complete. So basically, what we went over today was uh, things that will that will allow you to fine tune your Hackintosh uh, software that, you, that we installed last week, right? Um, you know, everything from getting everything from working in your, uh, in your OS to uh, fine-tuning the, uh, the DSDT, which is the overall aspect of your computer from what uh, the various types of uh, platforms see, such as app, you know, the App Store and FaceTime and those types of things. Because without editing that D DSDT, you're not going to be using the host, you know? I mean, if, 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 if FaceTime sees a Dell, X, you know, a Dell XPS 9000 or Dell, you know, 435T come in, it's going to be like, no, no, uh -uh. no, you ain't coming in here. So, Pamplis is definitely good for that, for sure. Any other questions, guys? Okay, I, I hate to say that, I hate to be the dunce in the group. <laughs> But Champlist is a separate piece of software that you said is a Swiss Army knife of the installation process, right? The post-installation yeah. process, and it's mainly you're mainly using it to basically sync up between iCloud and Apple services, so it would spoof the system to believe that it is truly an Apple product, and therefore all those services would work. Where 
champ list is installed, and I I saw it. I thought I saw it within the com chameleon bootloader. Is that a correct statement, or is that incorrect? That that's actually incorrect. Um, that's actually a, a, an an actual package that's ran within um, Mac OS itself. Um, yeah, champ, yeah. Champ list is. So yeah, champ list is yes, but it can make adjustments to chameleon bootloader. Okay, so it is writing to chameleon bootloader, basically. Yes, yes. So there's okay, there's gotcha. a folder, you know, somewhere on on the on the roots somewhere. You know, I think it's yeah. slash boot. I think it is, but it basically just tweaks the settings uh, via the GUI in the background, right. like every other thing does. You know. All right, got it, got it, got it. And did you show that? Did you show what it looked like? Did you screen share on that or no? Um, I actually can't screen share the the bootloader, but I I can show you like some different themes for sure. Yeah, let me go ahead and pull that up here. Give me just a few minutes. Chat list. All right. Um, it won't be like a, a a really good one, but I can show you just a, a few of the themes here. Let me see. How oh, did champ list come up, Riley? And how do you know what to name everything? Is that you had to just go on the forum and figure that out? You know, that yeah, I mean, this, uh, this, this. Yeah, yeah. Last week, I mean, everything's pretty straightforward. I mean, uh, everything from there is 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 good to go. I mean, as long as you have all your your kernel extensions and all those types of things, you'll be you'll be set to go off for that. Um, but really, the, the GUI does everything for you, pretty much. Um, I mean, as you can see here, this is a theme of the Chameleon bootloader. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes your, your your bootloader look a lot nicer than say Grub or um, the MBR of, of Windows 7. Um, and, you know, there's just a bunch of different themes here that you can you can choose from. Um, forgot which I one. Hack. I yeah. hack. I like that one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's there's a bunch of different ones here. Um, I picked out one. I don't remember which one it was though. I don't know what's called, um, but yeah, I mean, there's unlimited possibilities, pretty much, with this. There's, I think, there's about 25 different ones. That's and then, a uh, guy Cook wants to know: Is the presentation going to be available as a PDF? It will, indeed, yes. Because um, I know everybody can't really, uh, you know, doesn't really have access to Microsoft Office. Um, and for those of you who don't have access to Microsoft Office, um, and you definitely don't have access to Keynote if you don't have a Mac uh, you know, computer. Um, I'll just go ahead and upload that as a PDF file, so that way we can, uh, you know, everybody can see it. Yeah, I think the PDF. Time file to remind use. everybody that they can uh, access uh, both of those videos: this video and uh, the prerequisite video that showed the triple bootloader for the Hackintosh can be found at TechandCoffee.info. That's it. Nice job, Matt. Yeah. Nice job, Chris. Thank you, thank you. All right, guys. Uh, any other questions, comments, concerns? Nope. I think that's it. All right. That was awesome. it. Dirty. A, lot, a lot better than last last time, right? Forty nine minutes versus how many minutes now? <laughs> yeah, and and we just had a slight belch. Um, it looked like uh, same thing that happened last time. I lost connection. Came right back. Hey. Yeah. And we had that little uh, that little detour Japanese writing came up, and now we're back. So <laughs> looks like we only lost a few seconds. That's good. All right, yeah. So sounds good. All right, guys. Well, uh, thanks a lot for co for coming in to uh, seeing you know Tech and Coffee and uh, the post installation to Hackintosh. Uh, as Matt was saying just a little bit ago, uh, techandcoffee.info slash videos. We're gonna have all those videos up here really soon. Um, both this one and the one from before this. For the triple boots, not dual boot, triple boots. Um, you have to have a kind of a, a hefty piece of uh, hard drive to, to run that, but uh, you'll be good to go. Trust me with with uh, my instruction. Um, so without any further ado, uh, thanks thanks guys for coming in, and uh, thanks for everybody here in the, in the audience for participating. And uh, I hope you all have a great rest of your evening slash day. Thank you, Chris, for uh, presenting that for us. Thank you.